Thank you. <clears throat> you know, today it's the concern of every parent that their children should grow up well educated and settle well in their lives and be happy. What every parent looks forward is to see their children happy and prosperous, of course. And prosperous also because they want them to see happy. If they're not prosperous, they won't be happy. But in this process, it seems somewhere this link to the happiness is being broken. We lose the goal in sight. Look at a child, a baby. What a beautiful smile it has. What joy and friendliness it has. And by the time the same child moves through the school and college and look at their face, do they still maintain that joy, that innocence, that beauty that they have endowed with? This is where we need to really take a look and think. Is, it, is there any way that we can maintain the innocence in spite of growing older? If we could achieve that and we have done something marvelous. Because innocence brings certain beauty. You know, an ignorant person can be innocent, but that innocence has not much value. And an intelligent person can be crooked, but that intelligence doesn't have much value. What is worth having in the planet is an intelligence that does not destroy innocence. Can we bring such value in education, wherein every child is learned how to be friendly? In schools and colleges, you ask children how many friends you have, they'll count on their fingers, two, three, four, five. I have a question for them. Hey, look, if you don't know how to be friendly with 40, 50 kids in your classroom over the period of a year, how are you going to be friendly with six billion people on the planet when you come out of the college and school? The basic tendency to make friends have been lost somewhere in the pursuit of selfish education. And the sign of success to me is smile and friendliness, compassion, and willingness to serve each other. So now, with all eminent educators here, I'm thinking this, you know, things first start in California and then moves to the rest of the world. Because we are already in the 21st, 22nd century, perhaps. California is ahead, a century ahead of the rest of the world. <laughs> and good ideas take roots here first. I'm very happy that it's happening in this University of Berkeley here, that we are now beginning to think, is there any way or method that we can bring together wherein we can maintain the virtues and values which we are all endowed with? Every spirit is endowed with values. You know, it's interesting if you see the structure of a, an atom and the structure of a human consciousness, mind, very similar. Like the protons and neutrons are in the center, the negative charge particle is only in the circumference. Same with the human life. All the negativities, vices are only in the periphery. In the core of every being, every person, individual, there is positivity. There is virtue. So we don't have to do something to bring in virtue. We only have to nourish which is already there. So and with all the brilliant minds here, I think we will be able to come up with some programs and solutions. 
so that a youth can come up beaming, come up radiant with human values. It's very painful to hear that in colleges there are shootouts and there are pe crimes are happening in college campus, school campuses, which, which was not heard of several decades ago. You know, there was certain respect, certain uh, honor and dignity that was attached to education. That is being eroded in the past few years. I think we, it's high time that we sit together and restore that value. What do you say? Yeah? So we need this. A broad-minded education and a warm heart that comes out of that education. It's not that you become very well educated and you look down everybody else. You look down upon others. A well-educated person means one who is, who is friendly, who is compassionate, who, who be a nobody with everybody. You know, a sense of warmth that radiates in our atmosphere is worth achieving and nourishing in our life. usually ask this question around the world uh, where people are not fond of diversity especially when it comes to religion um, you know people start thinking only if only this religion then I go to heaven everybody else will go to hell I follow only these set of rules and every the whole world should follow only those set of rules only then they'll go to heaven, otherwise they'll go to hell. This type of wrong understanding of religion has caused terrorism in the world today. And terrorism is being bred in schools and colleges, mind you. Whether it is leftist doctrinated terrorism or religious doctrine terrorism, they are all their roots in schools and colleges. That's where uh, children start thinking, a youth starts thinking what is right, what is wrong, and what I should make the whole world to be right. And I have a simple question to them. Listen, you accept food from every part of the world. You accept music from every part of the world. We accept technology from every part of the world. Why not wisdom also from every part? That open-mindedness, multicultural, multi-faith um, education alone can bring to us, to our children, everywhere in the world. Even if a small part of the planet is left ignorant on this level, the world will not be a safe place. So all the uh, big thinkers and good minds of the society today will have to ponder on emancipating and, uh, and spreading this knowledge of human values, broad mind and warm hearts. And that should be our goal for bringing, bringing up our kids. What do you say? Hmm? It's wonderful. <laughs> Thank you, Sri Sri.